Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I had a few questions from a viewer about sub pumps. Do they always contain aluminum windings inside? Are they worth opening and separating the metals? And what do I do about some of the stubborn ones I come across? So I'm going to answer those questions today. I do love sub pumps and I do find them quite often on garbage day. They are worth good scrap money and unfortunately best time I find them is after a long rain or a long power outage. People have them running for a long time. They blow out or burn out or sadly for some of the homeowners they go to plug it in and realize it doesn't work. So unfortunately it is obsolete for them and have no choice but to put it on the side of the road. So I do have a full breakdown on some of the newer models. There are different styles and I will include the link to that one in my description as well. But these ones here do have two plastic case Mastercraft ones. Very easy to take apart. There's some screws underneath. And word of caution, when you are taking these apart, you do want to put some type of cardboard or catch basin underneath because they can release some excess oil or water that's still inside of them. Uh, but again, very easy to take apart with some screws here. This one here is a plastic coating. And one of the reasons I love sub pumps is because they come with an extremely long cord. Just gonna actually cut this one off here just to show it. Look at the size of this cord here. This is actually gonna be classified as 40% appliance wire. It's gonna be the same as your dehumidifier cords, your microwave cords, any cord that has an outer um, coating of plastic. Inside it has three individual coated strands of copper. So this right here is gonna be giving me $1.50 a pound in London, Ontario for this. You do wanna make sure you separate it from your higher value cord. But again, a great cord and very heavy. There's a good pound and a half here. I do also remove the brass prongs on the end of these. Some people will leave them on for the weight, but brass right now in our scrappers world is classified as our scrapper silver. And this right now, these brass prongs going for $3.15 a pound. So I do remove them. I do have uh, several different videos showing you maximizing your, maximizing your profit from these and they do add up for sure. So brass right there, take that brass off. Uh, but a nice power cord. It does also have right here a nice one of those um, shut off valves or turn on valves. Just going to quickly look at this one here. Uh, and I do want to focus on this sub pump. This one right here is actually not um, plastic. If I put a magnet to it, you can see it does stick. And that is all going to give me um, what we classify as tin shred price. Um, this actually could be classified this shell as steel. And I do want to address that question. I have had a lot of people saying to me that it's not tin or shred. It's a different um, um, metal breakdown or metal makeup. And I agree. But what I'm referring to when I classify as steel or tin shred is this the categories at a scrapyard. Any type of magnetic metal like this that is thinner than a quarter inch is going to go into tin or shred. Any metal that is magnetic like this that is going to be thicker than a quarter inch would be steel price. Tin shred right now in London, Ontario going for about 10 to 13 cents a pound. This because it is thicker would be steel going for a couple cents more a pound. Uh, probably about 12 to 15 cents a pound. But when I take my stuff in, most of my load is going to be tin shred. So all of my outer panels of appliances, microwaves, for example, the panels, stoves, washers, dryers. And because I have mostly tin shred, I just throw this right into my uh, tin anyway. I'm not going to take the time and gas to go to a different pile in the scrapyard just for a couple extra cents. But that is what I'm referring to here. And this actual shell here is very heavy. This entire unit as is weighs 19.4 pounds. So gonna still make money from the shell here. Different from my plastic cases like this that unfortunately are gonna have to go into the garbage. Um, but again, I do have full breakdowns on Mastercraft. This one, answering that question, what do I do about stubborn uh, sub pumps? This is heavily corroded. I did hit it with some WD-40 last night to try and remove all of the screws or loosen them. They are beyond uh, removing with a screwdriver. So I have had to use a grinder. 
Uh, and again, I do want to look at this very quickly just to show you what's inside. The cord, unfortunately, has been cut. Uh, I did not get the cord, so someone must have driven by, grabbed it, which is great for them, but they still missed out on a lot of good scrap material. Uh, so just going to get this last screw here. I do see a little bit of oil coming out, but that's all right. Okay, so just going to remove this box. Uh, and I do also want to talk about the screws while I'm removing them. You do want to put them up with a magnet to see if they are magnetic or not. A lot of items that are always submerged in water uh, can use at times uh, stainless steel or good stainless steel, which we classify as non-magnetic screws. So these ones, put them up to a magnet. These do not stick. There's not even any movement from them that you could see. So these are actually going to be classified as good stainless steel. I do have a small container here. This is just a stainless steel thermos I have. I will have to remove the cap when I bring it in. But all of these screws and bolts in here are going to be giving me about 77 cents a pound as non-magnetic stainless steel. Uh, I do also have other ones that came off of there on the bottom. So you do want to make sure you separate them. Any of them that are magnetic, I just throw right into my tin. But again, these are thicker than a quarter inch, so they could be steel, but I don't have enough of them to um, justify my drive over there. And I do make sure that I put them into containers when I am transporting them. So a lot of times this tin uh, coffee can here, fill it up with my screws, easy to transport, safe. Don't potentially drop them out of my truck and cause damage to other vehicles or tires. So easy to store, but all value as well from your bolts. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna hit this with a hammer. There is a small little plastic here. Very easy to do, okay? Uh, there are no screws, but just gonna put on some safety glasses. Okay, there's my break it a little bit there. I've already taken out, there's a couple of little screws, bolt connectors. But inside of here, just gonna break it for you to show you what's in here. Inside, there's gonna be a small little shut off click. Um, this is, if I put a magnet to it, going to be magnetic. But inside of there, there is gonna be a small um, relay box right off the side there. So I wanna make sure I hit it so I don't break it open. There we go. So inside of there, just gonna pull it. You can see right there on the tip, those two circles there actually have a small bit of silver on them. Um, they're called contact switches or relay boxes. Uh, on this side too, you can see them on the plug ends here. Uh, and you will find tons of these. There is some really nice brass as well that you can see there glistening, so yellow brass there. But those circles, do contain silver and I will cut those off, put them into a small little vial for later silver recovery, okay? But the rest of this is going to just be plastic. I do wanna check, sometimes these can be um, uh, metallic or magnetic, these can be steel, but all of this unfortunately is plastic. Gonna go into the garbage. Uh, but the rest of this shell, very hard to take off as mentioned underneath. There were a couple screws that were heavily corroded. Uh, I did have to hit those off with a grinder. Inside of here, you can see if I put this up to the camera, look at those heavily corroded screws. Can't even get a screwdriver in there. So what I've done is I've actually treated this like it is a compressor from an air conditioner or dehumidifier. Uh, very easy to take those apart as well. You do want to open those because uh, transformers that come out, or not transformers, sorry, motors that come out of compressors from your microwaves, uh, microwaves, my, I'm talking gibberish now, sorry, from your uh, dehumidifiers and your air conditioners are always copper, but I did want to open this one as well to see if there are some that are copper, and all I had to do for this one is I took my grinder, because I could not remove these screws, I just ground all the way around the bottom here, which did um, cut the screws. 
And luckily, after hitting it with a hammer, I had to use a heavy hammer. The cap did pop off, so you can see it here. And what I also want to suggest, when you are opening these, just like your compressors, I use a type of tray. This I actually found. This is from a, a turkey. It has a beautiful um, case you can see here. Underneath, you can see the liquid. That's the liquid that came out of there. There is a little bit of magnetic debris still in there that I'm going to have to remove. But it saves for sure on um, messes or cleanup. Um, so there is oil in there. Uh, again, that I did find, so it costs me nothing. But if you do not have one of those, frying pans work as well. You commonly find those on scrap day as well. Or you could just use, once your household items um, are no longer of use for you inside the house, they do become great uh, cleanup technique, uh, material, or uh, items. So again, all I did was cut off the bottom. Here is the top. The rest of this is going to actually just give me um, tin price because I'm throwing in my tin. But notice how thick that metal is. This is solid. Uh, there is a little bit of cast aluminum on here, but I am not going to take the time or grinder disc to remove that little bit of cast. So I am actually just going to throw it right into my uh, tin as is. You can see it is magnetic on the wheel here, non-magnetic at the top. But again, not wasting my time with that little bit. Uh, I don't have to remove any more of this oil, but this is a great weight, okay? Inside here, I'm gonna turn this to the camera, show you, look at that nice motor. So just gonna have to remove those last few screws there. And it is, again, as I said, a little bit oily, so I am gonna have to just kind of maybe drain it, leave it in that little uh, turkey tray there overnight, and let it uh, remove any more of the moisture. But you can see my fingers do have a little bit of wetness on them from that oil residue. So again, some more screws. That one is magnetic. Gonna remove this one. And we are gonna see if this motor is going to be copper. So I should actually just do the scratch test, but the suspense is gonna get me as well as you. So just gonna scratch it. Ooh, look at that. So there it is. Beautiful copper glistening there. If I was to scratch this and it was to reveal a metallic look, I would actually just leave it right in there, get the tin price for this. But that is copper, so I wanna get this out. Okay, so again, I did not obviously do the grinding on camera. I just wanted to save some time. But look at that beautiful copper motor here. It does have, as I said, the oil on it. And this copper right here is gonna be classified as number two copper. It does have a lot of oil on it. It does have a coating on it. So any type of copper that has oil, glue, paint, or is thinner than 16 gauge, which is about the thickness of the lead of a pencil, is going to be classified as number two. Um, this wire is actually pretty close to 16 gauge, but because it is heavily oiled as is uh, and does have some glue on it, I will have to put it into my number two. Um, I could actually try, one of my uh, subscribers asked me, what do I do with items that are heavily oiled? Um, you know, motors from, for example, um, uh, compressors, if they are thicker winding. Uh, you could put it into a vinegar solution that will remove oil. Uh, it will also make it a little bit brighter. But again, because this is thinner than 16 gauge, this is automatically gonna go into my number two copper. So I'm not even going to need to clean it. It's just going to go right into that. And currently right now, number two copper going for $4.30 a pound in London, Ontario. So a great price. If I was to bring this motor in as is, I'm going to get copper uh, motor price, which is about uh, 20 cents a pound. So we're going to make a lot more money taking the time to remove that copper. And the nice thing about that is once I do, I'm still going to get the money from the rest of this tin shell here. These are all individual plates put together. So again, this is going to be tin price. So 10 cents a pound for that and zero waste. Okay, very easy to take these apart. Just going to grab a grinder and I would just put one uh, incision down this. Uh, and what I will do is I will turn it over. I will put a screwdriver underneath the other side and pop it up. Uh, and I do have full breakdown videos on showing different styles of motors 
and I will include that as well in my uh, description. But for this one, because it is heavily oiled right now, I'm actually just gonna put it off to the side, let it drain in this bin, and I will tackle it a little bit later. Uh, I do have to make sure I clean up my hands, as you can see. It is messy, but well worth it for sure. I do also want to remove inside, there is a small wire. That wire, because it is single coated, is going to be higher value. That is going to be your 60% um, appliance wire. And currently that is going for $2.55 a pound. So you do want to make sure you separate it. There is going to be a brass connector on that as well. And I am going to remove the rest of this cord to give me max value. And again, the rest of this, if I put a magnet to it, this piece right here is actually non-magnetic. Um, this is either gonna be aluminum or stainless steel. And the last test I'm gonna show you actually with my grinder to see if that's aluminum or stainless steel is if I hit this with a grinder and it sparks, it's going to be stainless steel. If I hit it with a grinder and it doesn't spark, it's going to be aluminum. And that would be clean aluminum going for about 45 cents a pound. Stainless steel, as mentioned, going for 77 cents a pound. So just gonna actually show you last test. So again, that's called the spark test. Just gonna clean my hands off for a couple seconds. Get my grinder, it is already set up. Put on some safety glasses and check. So you can see that it sparked. So again, 77 cents a pound for that stainless steel. That I always put off the side, I'll save it up. A lot of your microwaves uh, can have the panels that are stainless steel, uh, barbecues for sure, and other different appliances. So good stainless steel at a scrapyard classified as non-magnetic, as well as your inside of different dishwashers. So you do wanna check those as well. Wanna make sure you separate it. So again, going to make more separating the stainless steel than if I was to get the tin price for this whole shell. So you do want to make sure you know your materials. And I hope that answered that question. I don't find a lot of these stubborn steel cased pumps a lot. I wish I did, but it did answer the question. Yes, some sub pumps can have copper windings. So you do want to open them up. Make sure you take that risk because if it is copper, going to make a lot more than bringing this in just as a um, motor price. Uh, you do want to make sure you cut off that beautiful 40% appliance wire. And again, these are out there. Uh, unfortunate for some, they find out the hard way that they no longer work when they need them. So make sure you check them often to see if they work in case of emergency. But I do find them quite often on garbage day for sure. Great source of scrap material. Um, hope that answered the question. Hope you enjoyed that. Please comment down below. I wish everyone a very happy 2024, uh, full of uh, happiness, joy, peace, and love, and lots of scrap. So again, thanks for watching. Please comment down below. Happy, happy 2024. Thank you again for all the support. Tin Man out.